you talk a little bit about with, uh, I guess, Cheeto missing a little bit of time with his knee, that Trayvon Diggs has gotten more reps this week. How, how is he looking, and how do you assess where he is right now? Yeah, I mean, the game's about opportunity. And, uh, you know, uh, Diggs has jumped in there and, and uh, gotten some more reps uh, just because of the nature of what's been going on. And, um, and, and he's taking it, you know, taking it and ran with it a little bit. So uh, Cheeto's in good spirits. He's been in all the meetings. He's doing good. And, and um, um, uh, we're really anticipating him coming back real soon. Well, where are you guys with the spot opposite Xavier Woods right now heading into the opener? Yeah, I mean, right now we're still in an evaluation mode. And, and the good thing is, is, um, you know, we're not playing anybody this week. Uh, we don't have a game coming up right now. Uh, you know, it, it's coming soon. Uh, so we're, we still got some practices where we're going to be able to evaluate uh, and assess and uh, give guys opportunities to continue to show what they can do. Um, and, and, and nothing's written in stone even when we move forward. So, we're, you know, we're, we're going to be in a week-by-week -week evaluation of what we're doing and who's out there. So uh, we like the attitude and the energy of, of the guys that have been out there and, and DT and HaHa -Ha and Dono and – uh, they all, they've all done a great job individually, and they've all made their own plays individually. Um, and we're just trying to find all the little small areas where we can improve and get better and, and, and continue to move the needle in the right direction. How difficult is it for a rookie corner to, to play in this league? Well, I think anytime, um, anytime something's new to you, uh, there's always the element of the unknown. Um, but at the end of the day, um, uh, there's a reason why he was a high draft pick. There's a reason why um, uh, he was highly sought after even, even throughout his high school career, even getting to Alabama. So um, uh, we li we're liking what we're doing with him. We we're, we're liking the effort and the attitude that he's bringing forth and the playmaking ability. Um, this game's all about improvement. It's all about development. Um, um, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to take lumps. It's just can, I, can, can we consistently take steps in the right direction uh, to continually try to be the best player we can be. Um, so we're excited about where he is right now. We just know we've got a lot of work ahead of us. You've been around a lot of defensive backs, obviously, over the course of your coaching career. How would you contextualize Trayvon's ball skills? I mean, he's a, he was a former wide receiver. So I don't know if you can get any better than that. Um, and he's putting them on tape right now in terms of just being able to touch the ball and attack the ball and uh, uh, with, with Coach Harris is doing a good job with him as well. He's doing a great job in the meetings. And uh, I, like, I, like, I like his confidence. Um, and he's got a quiet demeanor about himself. And when, when he gets between those white lines, man, you really see his personality come out. So uh, we're excited about him and, and being a piece of what we're doing. And, and, and everybody knows, uh, you, you know, he's, he's, he's a piece of the unit, you know, and, and collectively uh, we're going to get the bodies around him and, and everybody do their 111th and do their job um, to, to, to do what we need to do this year. Anthony Brown has largely been an inside corner, slot corner for much of his career. Can you talk about what he's doing and what you like about him on the outside? Yeah, we love his versatility. Uh, yeah, we love his versatility. He's a smart kid. You know, A.B.'s smart. He's intelligent. He's, he's got good football instincts. So um, um, we're able to, we're able to uh, be, be versatile with what we're asking him to do. Um, he's got great change of direction. Um, and you combine that with his ability to be a smart, heady player He's put himself in the right position to stay connected to receivers. And he's another guy that's touching the football. Um, uh, really, really, uh, really, really pleased with what he's been doing so far in training camp and where he's at. And um, uh, I think one of the best qualities about him is, is the intelligence that he brings. And, and, and he's a football, he's a football uh, person. So, I mean, you're able just to put him in different places and, and uh, he can pick it up and, 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 and get done what, we need, uh, what we're asking him to do. How much did you know about Al Harris before taking the job and, and just kind of what your guys' working relationship been like? Yeah, you knew uh, just the name a little bit. Uh, we didn't know each other personally, uh, just uh, just never really crossed paths with him. Um, but I was able to be here uh, when I got hired, and then we interviewed him, and, and he did an outstanding job in the interview. Um, and then just on a personal note uh, of just really um, uh, spending time with him. You know, you get to know, you get to know people in this business because you're locked in a room together for hours at a time. and. Uh, really, really humble person, um, uh, uh, had a great playing career, great, great, great teacher of technique, and, um, and he's just a good person. Um, so uh, our relationship's been great. You know, uh, we're putting this whole thing together on the back end along with, uh, you know, under the direction of Coach McCarthy and Coach Nolan, defensive coordinator, and, um, uh, and bringing his, his knowledge and his experience and, 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 and putting it together with mine, and uh, we're just liking what's going on right now on the back end. 
Memphis has been a lot of reps the last few weeks, uh, last week or so at safety. Can you talk about him at safety? Is he more of a safety now than a corner? I told the day one. I'll tell you what I told all the DBs. Hey guys, you guys play DB. Don't lock yourself into a position. Don't lock yourself in, in thinking you're any one thing. Learn them all. Uh, there's multiple spots back there. Uh, he's just another example of that, um, uh, of a guy that's a big, versatile athlete. Um, uh, he's a rookie right now, so he's kind of getting the grasp of the speed of the game. Um, uh, but but, uh, by, by, but by no means are you just one, one position for us. You, know, you play defensive back, and, and, uh, and we all know how this thing kind of goes throughout the season. Uh, you'll see multiple people in multiple different positions, and uh, our job is to make sure that we're putting them in the right position. Uh, number one, asking them to do something that they're able to do, and then putting them, putting them in a position where they can be successful. With a guy like Worley, who we've seen play pretty much everywhere, does that kind of fall in line with what you just said? And is there ever a, not specific to him, but when guys are playing multiple spots, can they be as good at one spot if they're playing three in three different spots? Well, I think you look at the history of just DBs and just in the name, the essence of a DB. Um, uh, the best ones are going to absorb all the positions and really try to be knowledgeable about everything that's going on because it's so it's so intri intricately connected that, you know, one person affects the other position. If I know exactly where the safety is and I'm a corner, well, that's going to help me better, uh, better understand what, what, what my technique is at corner. If I know exactly what a corner is doing at the safety position, I need, it can help me move six inches to the left or six inches to the right and be successful. You know, Daryl does fall into that category. You know, you've seen him, if you guys have been at practice, you've seen him literally play all three positions. He's, he's lined up at corner, nickel, and safety. Um, we really try to challenge the guys, and we, and we brought in with a, a, a mindset day one of, you know, I think some of the worst things you can do is just say, this is what I am, um, because what it's going to allow us to do on the back end is always plug and play the next best person, the next best player, uh, not necessarily just the quote-unquote backup of the position. You know, how can we find the best five, six, seven, eight DBs and get them on the field and get them in a rotation? Um, obviously, within the confines, that's realistic to – Hey, what can they what, what can they realistically do? Uh, but Daryl is a guy that you know. If you come to practice, you you've seen him at all positions, and he's been picking it up pretty good. Uh, he's putting in the time and among himself, and, and and you know outside of the time that's even just required of him to make sure that he's learning learning all, all that he he needs to learn. When you got this opportunity, when you got this opportunity. To, to coach in, in, in the NFL, um, what was what was more important to you? Was it the chance to be in the NFL, or was it also because of the fact that you're from the Dallas area and it's a chance to be with the Dallas Cowboys? Um, so when I looked at the when you look at opportunities, to me, um, the, number one, there there is not another franchise like the Dallas Cowboys. Um, this this was not my first NFL opportunity that was presented to me, um, but this was uh, a lot different than the other ones, in my own personal opinion. Um, uh, being that I'm from Dallas, um, uh, just added, uh, you know, a little bit more uh, uh, to, to the whole equation for me. Uh, I grew up as a Cowboys fan. Uh, uh, it's, a, it was, it's a part of my childhood. It's a part of my upbringing. Um, I remember Dale Johnson coming to my elementary school at White Rock Elementary School and coming to talk to us after they won the Super Bowl. I mean, I just got so, countless memories of just growing up. Um, as a Cowboys fan, and then you look at your own personal, professional career, um, and and um, I, I wouldn't say that I was necessarily, uh, you know, uh, saying that I needed to be at a certain place to validate uh, anything. Um, what I look to do is every single day, um, how can I just be a better coach than I was the day before? Uh, how can I move my needle in the right direction to continue to try to work on this path of being a master at what I do? Um, and the opportunity came along to, to work with a Super Bowl champion head coach, Mike McCarthy, um, a, a defensive coordinator, Mike Nolan, that's, that's literally uh, he's, uh, coached in multiple Super Bowls, and he, he is NFL uh, legacy, in my opinion. Um, and then we have a quality staff of coaches. Um, so I, I just I, I looked at it as a win-win situation. You know, I was coaching in the SEC. I was having a great time down there at Texas A&M and what we were doing and what we were building. Um, but but when, when this opportunity came along to get our family, um, um, not just to the NFL, but truly in my own personal opinion to the Dallas Cowboys, I just thought it was a little bit different. Uh, Jerry Jones and, um, um, and the whole Jones organization, home Jones family and, and the Cowboys, um, I just I thought it was a no-brainer. What's your best 
uh, impression of uh, Darian Thompson? He seems to be getting a lot of opportunities. Yeah, really pleased with Darian. I mean, he's just he's a pro. Um, he's just uh, he's extremely consistent, uh, extremely intelligent player. Um, he's got game experience. I think he played in over three or four hundred special teams reps last year. Started a few games last year. Uh, I think he's in his in a really good space. He's playing some of his best football that I've seen of him. Um, and I think he's he's energized. He's energized. He's hungry, and 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 he's not regulated to saying that. Uh, you know, I'm a special teams guy or I'm a this guy. Uh, this, this is an open competition and it's an open evaluation. Um, at the end of the day, the players are going to decide who's on the field. You know, all we're going to do is evaluate the tape and let them tell us what to do. Uh, we're going to teach them what to do and we're going to make sure they got their progressions and their rules and, and, and give them the technique and the fundamentals that they need. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, the players, it's a player's league and the players are going to decide uh, who's on that football field. And I think DT is a guy, he's a great example of a guy that, that um, he's a hungry, uh, humble player um, that knows what he's doing and he, he can get himself lined up and communicate the, you know, all the checks and balances of what we got to do on the back end. And, and he's making plays, which is, uh, we all know is the most important thing. You shared some personal uh, frustrations and, and fears following George Floyd's death. And can you just talk about this week and what happened in Wisconsin and and the, and the talks with the players and, and, and how that has affected the team and you personally? Uh, sure. Uh, you know, when you look, at, um, you look at society right now, and it, really I look at the essence of, you know, the last month right now, I've been in this building and, and, and we've, we've, we've been a part of team. Uh, we've, been, we've been in the locker room, we've been in the coach's locker room, we've been in the player's locker room. And uh, I just look at, uh, you know, the example of a locker room, the example of a team, and you have different people that have come from different backgrounds, they have different life experiences, uh, they have different things that have shaped their perspective. Um, but what do we all do? We, we, you know, we put differences aside um, and we come together as one and we work towards a common goal. Um, and I think at the core of everything that's going on, um, uh, that's the essence of what needs to happen. I mean, I, I think love is the ultimate answer. Love, love and unity is the ultimate answer uh, for what's going on in society, and, and it's no different than what goes on in a locker room and a team. Um, and um, uh, although there, there, there are frustrations that are out there, um, I, I just think that if it all goes back to love, it all goes back to unity, it all goes back to people working together towards a common goal, and, and not what breaks us apart, uh, not what divides us, but what can bring us together.